Say, I am good ground. Amen. Praise your Lord. Did I tell you Colossians 1? Okay, I'm going to read it from the New Century Version first. In verse 28, it says, So we continue to preach Christ to each person using all wisdom to warn and to teach everyone in order to bring each one into God's presence as a mature person in Christ. Isn't that the goal? That's what we do. The first part of our church service is an invitation for you to enter into the presence of God. Now, he's in you. If you're born again, he's there, but there's something about the corporate presence. He inhabits the praises of his people. There's nothing like it. Where two or three are gathered in his name, he's there in the midst. Then it goes on to say, to do this, I work and struggle using Christ's great strength that works so powerfully in me. Hmm. wonder what the struggle is. Paul says, I work and struggle. wonder what the struggle is. I submit to you, the struggle is self-desires. I need to push that aside and use the strength that he gives me. If I try to do what he's talking about in my own strength, I will make a mess. Amen. So the title of the message is Discipleship Evangelism. Discipleship Evangelism. And I, I hesitated to call it this because the Andrew Womack Ministries, Karis Bible, they have a book. It's 48 Lessons called discipleship evangelism. And when we went to Nicaragua, it took us two years, but we took 25 pastors through that course, all those courses. It's on marriage, salvation, baptism in the Holy Spirit, healing, you name it, it's all in there. And so there's all these lessons, and we would sit down. We got them books in Spanish. And so we graduated them after two years. It was a, an amazing thing. So we affected 25 churches, which means we affected over 1,700 people in that area. Very small community, but we've, we've affected it. So I hesitated to call it this, but there's something in me. This is the right name for this because our, our evangelism should be discipling people. And we'll, we'll get really into that. That's really what we're talking about. Okay, Um, for some people, discipleship seems like an unnecessary option to Christianity. And I would submit to you that is absolutely incorrect, that discipleship is essential to Christianity. People think, okay, let's get people born again. We'll get into the details of this as we go. You know, we need to get people born again. When I first rededicated my life, I went on a campaign, and I started soul winning. I was winning all my friends. And, and really, at the time, I was doing what I had seen modeled, and I was just looking for notches in my belt. The born-again experience is an event. It is the threshold to discipleship. It's a doorway you walk through. Some people stop at the doorway, Okay? Hopefully, we create a culture where discipleship is the norm. It's expected. It's what we do. We recognize that this is how we reach our potential. Now, this this verse in the New Living Bible, these two verses, so we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God perfect in their relationship in Christ. That's why I work and struggle so hard, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. The New King James says that we may present every man perfect in Christ. If you're not careful, if you have a a works mindset, you'll read this that I need to work to be perfect so that I can go to God's presence. Nope. We get people in Christ and now we present them to God's presence. Perfect. Perfect in Christ. And I can prove it to you scripturally. I won't go down that road today. My intent is not to re-preach the gospel. You guys know. Okay. Now I want you to go over to Matthew 18. You know we had to go here, right? Amen. I love this subject. 
It's one of my favorites. Um, so, uh, you know, when it comes to discipleship and, and evangelism, I was just talking to uh, somebody about this the other day that we are discipling. <laughs> and um, there's no wrong way to win people to Jesus, right? But sometimes what you find is, whether it's denominations or cultures or whatever, you have some people who are just like, all the way, we got to go in the street and knock on doors and stop everybody we see, and right? And then you have other people, which is kind of where we are, where it's like, as you go, you build relationships with people, and you disciple them through relationship. I don't think there's a wrong way, right? I think people are anointed for different things. But to make the decision that there's only one way really limits God right? And the body of Christ and the gifts, the diversity of gifts that exist. But uh, I guess the one thing I would want to say is the only risk with the um, wide net evangelism is you're giving birth to people and never talking to them again. And I think that's a mistake. And I just have a little scripture to substantiate that. In 1 Thessalonians 2, Hopefully that's not in your notes. No. Okay, good. <laughs> um, verse 6, it says, Nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others, uh, when even we made demands as apostles. Let me skip to verse 7. But we were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. That's how we ought to be with people we win to the Lord, right? And it goes on to say, So affectionately longing for you, we, will, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives. So winning people to Jesus is step one, but there's like step 14,000 after that. And part of that is sharing our lives with one another and caring for those people, kind of like a parent, right? Because the alternative is they go into the world, and how many of you know people fill in their own blanks? (laughs) That gets messy, does it not? So that, yes, I love this subject, and uh, I'm excited to talk about it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it would be like giving birth to a baby and then just ignoring it. Would you do that? See, being born again, as I said, is an event, but discipleship is a process. And it, it's not an intermittent process. It's what we do. It's our lives. Now, you're there in Matthew 28. Let's start reading in verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. That's a good idea. But some doubted. Now this is after his resurrection, okay? Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. That is not a little statement. You know, I just, this morning, I started thinking about it. All authority in heaven and on earth. He had authority on earth because he was a man. But he has all authority in heaven because he's the creator. Without him, nothing was made that was made. He's the creator, so he's both. This is a massive statement. Then he says, go therefore... Go, therefore. Always ask yourself, what is the therefore, therefore? Because he has all authority in heaven and on earth. What else is there? Go, therefore, and what? Make disciples. He didn't say win converts. Now, if you're reading from the the King James, the traditional King James, it says teaching. Teaching, but the inference here is that we're going to bring people into a process. Now, in order to get people into discipleship, they must be born again. They need a teacher on the inside. The Holy Spirit teaches us, guides us into all truth, right? Okay. This is the right message. Boy, I feel my helper. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. So he wants to evangelize and disciplize the earth. You know, I, I heard Andrew Womack in, in teaching on this subject years ago, and he said there's about 8 billion people on the earth. He said if each person would commit to reaching one person 
for six months. And then at the end of that six months, they, they reach somebody and you take on a new one. We would have had this thing wrapped up in less than 17 years because of exponential multiplication. Interesting. I didn't plan to share that step, but there it is. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them, there it is again, to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Now, you're going to see a theme in all of this, and the theme is teaching. Teaching. That's primarily what you're going to get at Brookside Church, and I don't apologize for it. There's times people say, well, is that all we're going to do? It's the most important thing is to learn the Word of God, right? Amen. Now, that word making disciples, it's helping someone to progressively learn the Word of God, to become a matured, growing learner, a true follower of Christ, to train or develop in the truths of Scripture. So our job is to teach people the Word of God. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Now, the word teaching, it means to impart knowledge. It nearly always refers to teaching the scriptures or the written word of God. Isn't that potent? To directly admonish, instruct, and impart scriptural knowledge. Now, we're going to watch a video, but before we do, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, I just, um, what you said there about just not having people get born again, look at the way the word describes converts in Acts 2. Uh, and verse, I mean, honestly, you could read from like verse 38 to the end of that chapter and you'd re- get a really good picture. But it says, um, now all who believed were together. Well, there's a good identifier that they're disciples, right? Um and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided among them all as anyone has need. So continuing, continuing, you guys know what I mean? Continuing in the beninging. <laughs> so continuing daily, say daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily. Sometimes we get it wrong and we say we added them to the kingdom. No, they need to be a part of the church. Did you, in all that reading I just did, did you notice how together everyone was? I mean, spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, every part of them was in one accord, right? And that's what we're calling other people to be a part of, not just to get the message. And listen, if that's all they got, if they got the message and disappear, I've done that. First guy I ever led to the Lord, his name was Nick. No clue where he is. But I know this, he belongs to Jesus. And I'll take that over the alternative, But the best God has for people is be born again, join the family. Amen. You know, sometimes in uh, my pastor's group, there's a campaign because they read that from house to house, like the church is supposed to be in the house, but they started at the temple. So I submit to you, it's both. See, we, we come together to hear a corporate word, and then we get together and we get involved in each other's lives. We'll We'll break down what discipleship looks like, how we do this. Um, it's, it's a very supernatural, natural thing. Does that make sense? Now, we're going to watch a video. This is from The Chosen, and I shortened it a little bit. I, had, I took out a big chunk of it, but it's about 13 minutes long. And this is Jesus asking people to follow him because that's what we're called to do. Follow him. I don't know what else I can do to help you. Give me that. 
Lots of it. That's not going to solve your problems. It's meant to distract from them. No more preaching. Just give it to me. Lilith, please listen to what I'm saying. says the Lord who created you and he who formed you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You that down for a catch. A little farther out. Uh, I don't have a quarrel with you, teacher. But we've been doing this all night. Nothing. All right. At your word.
my brother and the baptizer. <laughs> you are the Lamb of God, yes? I am. Depart from me. I am a sinful man. You don't know who I am and the things I've done. Don't be afraid, Simon. I'm sorry. We, we've waited for you for so long. We believe. But my faith, I'm sorry. Lift up your head, fisherman. <laughs> what do you want from me? Anything you ask, I will do. Follow me. You as well. Yes, you, James and John. Come, follow me. Matthew. Matthew, son of Alpheus. Yes. Follow me. Me? <laughs> yes, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what are you doing? You want me to join you? Keep moving, street preacher. Do you have any idea what this guy has done? Do you even know him? Yes. Listen, I said to you. What are you doing? Where do you think you're going? Guys, let me go. Have you lost your mind? You have money. Quintus protects you. No Jew lives as good as you. You're gonna throw it all away. Yes. I don't get it. You didn't get it when I chose you either. But this is different. I'm not a tax collector. Get used to different. I'm glad we passed by your booth today, Matthew. Yes. Shall we? God loves the world in this way. That he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So this has nothing to do with Rome. It's all about sin. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, Nicodemus. He sent him to save it through him. It's as simple as Moses' serpent on the pole. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Have you ever heard anything like this before? Shh. When I met Lilith, Mary, that day, I told my wife and my students I said, she was beyond human aid. Only God could have healed her. And then I saw her healed. And here you are. I, my whole life, I have wondered if I would see this day. Follow me, and you'll see more. Follow you, John. 
join me and my students. In two days' time, we leave Capernaum. Come see the kingdom I am bringing into this world. But I... I, I can't. You have a position in the Sanhedrin. You have family. You are getting advanced in years. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. But the invitation is still open. The invitation to what exactly? <laughs> to lead a nomadic life, to... to give up who I am. It's true. There is a lot you would give up. But what you would gain is far greater and more lasting. Is this another one of your born-again mysteries? <laughs> Maybe. I know mysteries aren't easy for a scholar. Think about it. Take your time. On the morning of the fifth day, we leave and we'll meet by the well in the southern quarter. Kingdom of God really coming? What does your heart tell you? My heart is swollen with fear and wonder. You can tell me nothing except that I am standing on holy. you to go in your Bibles to John chapter 15, and I want to say this as you're turning there, to make disciples, I must be a disciple. To make disciples, I must be a disciple. Amen. Now, in John 15, and we really could read a lot, this is where he's the vine and we're the branches, and, and this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, verse 8. And without him, we can do nothing. It's all there. But we'll start reading in verse 12. And Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. There's the commandment. We got into a discussion in the pastor's meeting, and this was the topic, discipleship, making disciples. And I'm just like, hello, I'm hearing it everywhere. It was in Pastor Josh's sermon last week. I'm just sitting over there going, Jesus, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. So there's a spotlight on making disciples right now. And how do we do this? We, we love one another. Some people get into the commandments and it's like, it's a whole list of things out of the Beatitudes. You got to, got to do this, do this, do this, don't do that. Do th- love one another as I have loved you. He simplified it. Isn't that awesome? Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. This isn't just a going to war and taking a bullet, although that would be included. This is sacrificial giving of yourself to others. That's what we're talking about. Discipleship will cost you. Verse 14, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Now, if you have a a works mentality, you'll read that and think, okay, in order to be Jesus' friend, I need to do what he says. It's the opposite. Because we're his friend, we're compelled to do it. We want to do it. It comes from that place. It comes from the place of relationship and friendship with him that we do what pleases him. Amen? And the context is 
loving one another, giving your life for other people. That's the context. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. Watch this. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and what? Bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you that you love one another. Look at the bookends. Loving one another. Giving ourselves, giving our lives for others. There's no greater love than that, right? Then he says, go and bear fruit. I used to read this and think that it's about stuff. You know, use your faith to acquire things. Take more ground. Build this, build this. It's about people. It's all about people. And I I wrote down a statement. I'll I'll read it to you. The measurement of our disciple-making quality is determined by fruit. Specifically, fruit that remains. I've led people to Jesus, and I have no idea. I, 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 my absolute best friend when I was working at Emergency One, he and I used to get high together. We would go to bars together. We would party together. And, you know, one day we had a falling out. I don't even know what it was about. And for two years we didn't talk. We worked in the same office and didn't say a word. For two years. And then in the meantime, guess what? Wade goes through a massive process. I got born again. The love of God was in my heart. And I woke up one morning and I said, Julie, Al Williams will be born again today. And we went. I walked up to him and I said, let's go to lunch. And he looked at me. I said, I'm buying. Okay. That was the way to get Al to go anywhere. Buy his lunch. And we went to Olive Garden. And it was like the Lord put a curtain around us. We were in our own place. I don't know if anybody heard us. I could care less. And this guy was drinking in what what I was sharing with him. And I said, I don't know what you heard about me because I went through a process like um, EAP program and uh, uh, employee assistance program. I went to a drug treatment center in that two years. And he goes, yeah, I heard, I heard some of that. The grapevine is pretty reliable. <laughs> And he had heard all the things that I'd been through as far as drugs and all of that kind of stuff. And I said, well, it's all true. I said, but I am different today, and I'm going to offer this to you. And he got born again in my little Isuzu pup pickup truck that my dad had given me. We parked at the Disney Welcome Center there in Ocala. And I'm telling you, there's a dent in that ground right there. That guy got born again. I'd never seen a conversion in my life like that one. It was like we were underwater. My hearing was acute, and it just, it was the presence of God. Jesus filled that truck. I wasn't expecting that. I looked over, he's crying. Tears are falling off his face, and he just looked at me, he's shaking. He goes, I need him so bad. And you know what? Today, He's a deadbeat dad. I know the conversion he had. I know that process. And I tried to stay after him. But before you knew it, he's back to drinking and doing all the, all the things that he and I used to do. Now, he was on fire for a while. So it's important that our fruit remain. But that's not always up to us. I want to give you, this is a radical statement I'm going to make. Jesus failed where Judas was concerned. Had the same opportunity, but he he wasn't able to to reach him. It has more to do with the condition of the element than the opportunity. Jesus gives us all the same opportunity, right? Has more to do with the individual. But the quality of our disciple-making, look around and see who remains, who's still there, who's still in the process of being discipled. Now, you go over to uh, Matthew chapter 10. Yeah, I've always, uh, well, first I just want to say, aren't you thankful that Jesus pursued you? 
Uh, when I watch those, I just go, that's me too. He pursued me. Um, but, you know, when it says there, bear fruit, what I think of is, um, is changed people, right? What is the fruit of the Holy Spirit? It's who we become and, and how we are to others. And so, you know, one of my favorite things is when I uh, have led people to Jesus and we're in the discipleship process, they start sharing with me, I, yeah, I feel like this now. And they don't realize they're telling me scriptural things. And then when I give them scripture, they're like, oh my gosh, right? That's, that's when you know it's really real, is God's doing things in their heart that they don't know are scriptural, right? They're living out the word. They're becoming a part of the word, and it's bearing fruit through them, not out of obligation, but just out of supernatural fruit, right? Um, and that really is what Jesus wants. Why? What, 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 what value is there? Because he just likes good Christians? No, because then they're going to do it for somebody else, right? The, the, the purpose is reflecting the Father appropriately, to capture more people, to reflect the Father appropriately, to capture more people, right? That's really what it's about, like you were just saying. It's about people. Every single person matters, right? I would also say, um, sometimes when we talk about discipleship, this phrase comes up, oh, I'm not qualified for that. (laughs) Yes, you are. Who here knows how they got born again? There should be way more hands. (laughs) Okay, if you understand how to be born again, you are prepared to disciple people. Why? Because you have the centerpiece of all of existence in your knowledge, which is the gospel. Okay? Now, there's two ways to get really good at discipleship. Be one, right? And then do it. (laughs) You just bring people alongside you. Because you know what? Here's the deal. There's been plenty of times where in discipling other people, they ask me a question and I go, I don't know. (laughs) There's this idea that we have to know everything and have been like a pastor for 20 years or something. No, No, not at all. Do you read your Bible? Do you understand who Jesus is? Go there for. (laughs) It's that simple, right? And if there's still this feeling of unqualified or i got to clean myself up, I submit to you, you don't yet know the gospel. Amen? Because you're already clean. Sometimes you only need to wash your feet. Right? Sometimes we walk places we shouldn't. But I love that in John 13, Jesus didn't say, well... You redirted yourself. No, he said, no, you're already clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. Sometimes we just have to wash each other's feet. But you are qualified. You are qualified. That's what Paul said. God qualified us. We don't qualify ourselves with experience. Does that help? Sure. But this message that we carry, this thing here, this is the qualification. Amen? And that's for everyone. No one's exempted from this. Let me say that as emphatically as I can. No one's not called to this. No, not one. Now, it may look different for you than it does for me. In fact, I guarantee it. There will be a different flavor. You're going to live out of your own territory with the Lord, right? And it'll happen in its own, your own unique way. But every single one of us is a carrier of his word, his message, and his presence. And that's for a purpose. It's not just for us, it's for others. Amen. Amen. Now, before we read the scripture, I want to give you the definition of remain, that your fruit remain. It means to stay in a given place, state, or relation. The last part of it is to be present. Be present. That's really all that's required. Just be present. Show up. Say, show up. up. You're going to hear it again. Show up. That's it. Just show up. You don't have to have all wisdom. Now, you're there in Matthew 10, verse 7. 
And as you go, preach, there's that word again, we, we mean proclaim, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Do you see this? You've received freely, now give it away freely. Okay, now he's talking to his disciples. He sends them out in pairs, okay? Skip down to verse 11. Now whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy. Now my question is, who do you inquire with? You just start asking, hey, who's worthy? In, in a town, nobody knows who you are, right? We'll, we'll break that down in a minute. Remember the word worthy, because it, it, it can give you the wrong impression there. And stay there till you go out. And whenever you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you, and whoever will not receive you. Now, that's what we're talking about. Somebody who's receptive. Are you seeing it? Somebody who is primed to receive. Al Williams was primed to receive that day. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. I have done that where, where you were rejected. Walk out and it's a testimony. That I'm, I'm shaking this off. Okay. Now the word worthy, are you ready for this? It's the assessment in keeping with how someone weighs in on God's balance scale of truth. So in other words, you need to get God's assessment. Who do I need to talk to? He will highlight somebody. You might be looking out at a sea of people and all of a sudden, boom, one of them lights up to you. Your heart goes out to them. Follow that. Follow love. 1 Corinthians 14.1. We, we desire spiritual gifts, but we pursue or follow after love. That's how it works. That's who's worthy. Whoever God highlights to you, they're worthy. Everybody's worthy. Because what, what's the word worthy? It's worth. What, what determines the worth of anything is what somebody's willing to pay. What did God pay? Now, what, what we don't want to do is start up a big discipleship program and make this kind of thing. You know, I'm not interested in that. I want it to be exceptionally organic, if you will. I want it to be supernatural. Let God connect the body parts. I don't want to get into some religious routine, some formulaic uh, structure or whatever, but I just want to get a culture in our hearts, a desire. Your heart should be burning for this right now. I've been praying it would, that this, is, this would be burning in you. And you don't have to know the entire Bible by heart. You just need to have a Bible <laughs> and, and be willing to sit down. Sometimes people ask me something, and I don't know. I don't know the answer. But you know what we do? Let's find out together. That's it. That's what discipleship is. It's togetherness. Now, as we close... We're going to watch another video. Now, you got a comment before we, before yeah. we watch it. Yeah, I, it, you know, I just, how many of you have ever discipled someone before? Okay, good bit. That's awesome. Um, for those of you who haven't, uh, he, here's how easy it is. Make that person a part of your life. Right? You, that's, that's, so anytime we start discipling someone, we just started discipling a new person. Um, and this is what I always start with. We're just going to be a part of each other's life. That's it. There's the program. Because she asked. She's like, well, where do we start? Is there books to read? And I'm like, no. Just, what? yeah, that's it. Right, here's step one. Come over. We'll have coffee ready. That, that's it. You become a part of each other's lives. You share each other's lives. Right? You love these people. You give up your time with them and for them. And God has a way. When you, because here's the thing. When you understand that's what the purpose is, that's why we're gathering, he's a part of it. So now all you need do 
is connect. That's it. And with that connection, he's there in the midst. Because doesn't the word say, whoever gathers in my name, two or more, yeah? So when you gather on purpose for the sake of Jesus, it doesn't have to be programmatic. You gather for the sake of Jesus, he's in the midst, and discipleship has begun. And you know what? There's been times where when we've been doing these sessions, we just talk about movies. You know? Sometimes we'll get together and we talk about what's going on in the world or the weather or whatever. But what's happening is the Lord's knitting our hearts together, right? And within that relationship, he's in the middle. Amen? Amen. It's that simple. You be a part of life together. Amen. 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 Well, um, we're going to watch a video. As I said, this seems to be in the air. And I was talking with uh, Tony Nardella. He's the, um, the leader of our group, and that was the topic. We went right here and read Matthew 28, make disciples. And I'm like, oh, come on, Jesus. You know, it's in the air. That means there's a spotlight um, in the earth, in the kingdom about this very thing. Freely you've received, freely give. Now, we're going to watch a video, and what this is, one of the pastors had put on our text thread or WhatsApp thread to go see the movie The Forge. I didn't even know what that was. I hadn't heard anything about it. And so I'm like, The Forge, all right, what is that? And so uh, I investigated it a little bit, and I looked on YouTube, and I saw an interview with the lady that stars in it. And I thought, wow, this is interesting. It's all about making disciples. I'm like, there is a good awesome Christian movie about making disciples right now in the theaters. I recommend it. I recommend it. It's, it's playing today at Epic. You could go today. You could go tomorrow. It's, it's awesome. I, I think there were tickets up till Wednesday. I don't know when, when it ends. But anyway, we're going to watch part of that interview, and then we'll watch the trailer itself, which is about two minutes. So the whole thing, about three minutes long. So go ahead, Harrison, and play that next video. You need to be more of a fountain than a drain. And you need to start giving more than you're taking. The more I thought about it, I was using people to reach my own goals without loving them at all. How important is is discipleship? Oh, it's critical because it is actually the framework that Jesus, when you look back at his earthly ministry, what he did, was call some people into his intimate circle. He pulled one after the other and said, come walk with me, be in step with me. This is what discipleship is. So for us as Christians, you know, it's one thing to accept the free gift of salvation and thank God it's free. Discipleship is a whole nother thing because that comes at a high cost. A big part of becoming a man is showing up. Can you do that, Isaiah? You hear all these promises. Oh, Lord! Who are we allowing to walk with us so that they can see the Christ in us and know what it looks like to live out the truths of Scripture in marriage, in the raising of kids, in the stewarding of finances, in the building of careers and businesses and ministries? If we don't have somebody to look at who's walked the road before us and has some insight, wisdom, and encouragement to share, we'll always be at a deficit. So. It's a critical part of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Your grandfather drove this? My dad told me he was gonna fix it over me. This is the way he left it, like everything else. You are my son, but I'm giving you one month to find a job, or you can find one of your little friends that's gonna let you sleep on their couch for free. Can I help you? I'm just trying to talk to a young lady right here. I need for you to leave my shop right now. I'm gone, and I won't be back either. That's something right there your father would do. Oh, I ain't him. You acting like him. Boy! It's hard for a woman to call out the man and her son. I just need some prayer support. I'm just trying to see about a job, right? I ain't hit about nothing. You what, you a salesman for this company? I'm the president. That's for more. A big part of becoming a man is showing up. 
can you do that, Isaiah? You made all these promises. Oh, Lord! When my sister tells me that she needs prayer support, honey, I bring prayer support. Am I in the right place? Miss Clara! We pray that the Lord will open Isaiah's eyes so that he could see himself the way that the Lord sees him. You're 50 minutes early. It's trying not to be late again. I want to introduce you to a small group of men that mean the world to me. We grow together, we eat together. It's one of the most important things I've ever done in my life. God has forgiven me so much. Who was I to refuse to forgive? Okay, Jesus, I give it to you. What kind of man do you want to be? And what do you want people to think when they see you coming? We only got six of us, seven including Emmett. I'm willing to go to second mile. We can't just walk out and do nothing. Let's roll. If I may be blunt, a man stands in front of me. Isaiah, welcome to the forge. Claire, I need you to come by here more often. Mm hmm Keisha needs you. Tell me what you waiting, what you waiting, what you waiting for. Praise God. You, you need to go see it. It'll bless you. There's two movies right now that are, that are spiritually based, and they're burying the competition. Nobody's even close. It's amazing because there's money to be made in this industry. So I was told about this. I watched the trailer, and I was going to take the teens Thursday night, but I realized, oh, I, I messed up the schedule. There wasn't youth that night. And so um, I took the family on Friday. Oh, my gosh. It was awesome. In fact, speaking of family, my son just walked in. Wade Part 4 is here, and some of my grandchildren are here. So praise God. Awesome. He's a testimony. He's a disciple today. Before he was, well, I won't go into all of that. He worked on his testimony for a long time. But uh, praise God, he's doing good and serving God. So it's a good thing. Well, did you get anything out of that? Did that help you at all? We're just getting started. Just got it introduced. But, but start letting the Lord build that desire in you to make disciples.